All right, in this video, we're going to be talking about domain and range. We're going to be talking about piecewise defined functions. And we're going to talk about what is and isn't a function. And while this isn't probably the true definition of a function in the you know pure mathematical sense of the word, uh, the defining characteristic of a function for our sake is going to be that it has no more than one output for a given input. Okay. Doesn't mean that it has an output for every potential type of input, oh. as we'll see here in a second. You know, like we could talk about a function y equals one over x is certainly a function, but it's not defined for where x is equal to zero. You know, in this unit, I'm trying to present y'all functions algebraically, numerically, and graphically. So I'm going to give you a table of values, you know, and maybe we have something like x is 1, 2, 3, and 4, and y is 3, negative 1, 0, 1, something like that, okay, where we, for a given x value, there is a only one y value, and maybe I'll draw you a picture of a graph function, yeah, maybe it does something weird like that. Okay. Again, each x is only corresponding to at most one y. Now we're thinking about things that aren't a function. Well, more than one output for the same input might actually be easiest to start with the graph. Okay. For the given input, that's your x value. You know, more than one Thing. And then you're like, oh, yes, I remember this from Algebra 1. This is that vertical line test thing. So maybe, you know, maybe it looks something like, I don't know, something like that, some sort of weird curve where you had one X, but two different Ys that went with it. Okay, so maybe like, and, you know, three, negative one, one, zero. Right, see, 2 is going to negative 1 and 1. That's not okay. That makes it not a function. And then algebraically, you aren't too familiar with the types of objects that can cause, you know, a self-looping curve or whatever. But one thing that you have come into contact with is you've had something like uh, y squared equals x or something. You know, you need to take the square root of both sides of the equation. And then you, of course, remember to, you know, include the plus or minus. So it's like y equals plus or minus the square root of x. Okay. This is not a function. Because you choose an x value, say 9, y is positive square root of 9, which is positive 3, or it could be negative square root of 9, which would be negative 3. Okay, so this is not a function because of the plus minus. All right now we've got these six graphs on your on your notes sheet. And, you know, some of these are functions, some of them are not. And that's where we're going to go through. We're going to think again at vertical line test. Are we hitting at most one y point on the graph? One point on the graph for each x. At most one y value for each x value. And so, okay, on the first one, you know, Kind of drawing some vertical lines, and yes, I'm just hitting one time, just one time. Okay, with a line, yes, definitely. Okay. Over here, okay, didn't hit there, that's not a big deal if you don't hit. But here, where I've hit twice, that makes this not a function. Now, to be more specific, I'm going to say this is y is not a function of x on this. You could say that x was a function of y, but that's a different discussion and, and not something that we're going to go into in this class. Okay, number four has got a bunch of, like, you know, direction changes and wiggles to it. But, again, whoops. Draw a vertical line. You're going to only hit it once. In number five, you draw, okay, it hit three times. That is not a function.
to number six. This is a weird looking graph, but you know, if we go over through here, it is just one point for each vertical line. So this thing is a function. So only three and five fail to be functions. Despite a lot of these things looking pretty weird. But like a circle, not gonna be a function. Next, we're going to talk about domain and range. And the definition that we'll take for domain is that the domain of a function is a set of all x values where you can plug in x and f of, f of x comes back defined. And basically, any place where the function is not undefined. And now, if we're going to look at things algebraically, we need to be aware of what causes something to be undefined. Um, anybody got any Suggestions for what could cause a thing to be undefined? What are you not allowed to do? Divide by zero. Yes. Definitely. And what about uh, square roots? Are you allowed to, what are we not allowed to take square root of and have it, at least, and have it come back to be a real number? Okay. So. If we are interested in the function, you know, returning a real number, which we are in this class, we should not be taking the square root or any even root of a negative number. And the third one that you, you know, it was recent, but you may have forgotten because we didn't really talk about it that way because we hadn't talked about domain and range yet, is the log. So... Taking the log of a number that's not positive, okay, log of zero is undefined. Log of negative one, undefined. So these are the things that can cause, you know, something to be undefined. So when they ask you to find the domain of a function, this is where you're going to basically say, all right, the first one is the square root of a thing. Well, I know that the thing I take the square root of needs to be greater than or potentially equal to zero. So that's just x is greater than or equal to zero. When taking a natural log or any type of log, I know that the argument has to be positive. It can't be zero or negative. Okay, so that means that x needs to be greater than zero. And then when I'm dividing two things by each other, I know that this thing that I'm dividing by can't be zero. I'll have a little bit more complicated example for you that involves more solving, but for now, this is the, the general idea. For, you know, logs even roots and rational things. And here we've got some better examples for you to find the domain of f of x. Well, again, this is the same pattern here, but we're going to need the thing on the inside to be greater than or equal to 0. So I've got this 3x minus 4 needing to be greater than or equal to 0. So I subtract 4. And I divide by 3. Wait. And I get x is greater than or equal to 4 thirds for the domain. The natural log. I know that the thing on the inside of the natural log has to be positive. So this thing here is going to be greater than 0. Okay, so in the same way, you're just going to solve at this thing. Divide by 7, and you get 2 sevenths. Okay, and for this third one, I just need to make sure that I'm not dividing by 0. There's nothing else wrong with this. There's nothing else that could go wrong, really, besides dividing by 0. So I just need to make sure that that thing in the denominator is not equal to 0. Got x squared plus 5x plus 6. And now we're good at solving when things equal zero. So if we wanted to find out where it wasn't zero, we just find out where it was zero and exclude those values. Okay, I'm going to solve this by factoring. Okay, 
right? And well, this will this product will not be zero just as long as x is neither negative three nor negative two. Okay, so you know something like that. All right, next we're going to talk about the range. And the range of a function y equals f of x is the set of y values actually achieved by f. Um, so, you know, in some textbooks, they might call this the image of f. And that's, in general, we're going to most likely determine the range of a function by looking at its graph. Okay. And let's see what we're, we've got in the notes packet about range. Really not much. I think, you know, actually determining the range of some things is maybe slightly beyond the scope of the course. But I will talk about, I've got an example. Um, you know, something like f of x equals e to the x. Well, e to the x, e is a positive number. And no matter what power you take a positive number to, it's always going to come back positive. So... I'm going to say this thing has range y greater than zero. Okay. We've got f of x equals one divided by x plus one. There's another thing with a limited range. Okay. Well, if you take one or really any number and you divide it by various numbers, the only way you can get zero when you're dividing two things is by the numerator being zero. So f of x will never be able to equal 0 for any x you can plug in. So this one, the range is y is not equal to 0. Okay. Um, you know, something like f of x equals x squared. <laughs> Actually, I like that. Or really any even power of x. Right? The range is going to pretty much be, okay, you take a number, you square it, it's either you took a positive number and you squared it and it's still positive, it was a negative number and you squared it and became positive, or it was zero and it remained zero. So this is where y is going to be greater than or potentially equal to zero. And if you go back and look, you can see that all three of these things with limited range are related to the types of things that can cause us to have a limited domain x squared related to square root x, right? and 1 over x plus 1, well, that's kind of related to 1 over x, where we're not allowed to divide by 0, but, okay, something like, and there's, there is a relationship between the domain and range and a function and its inverse, okay, e to the x, very related to natural log x, okay, so that's, Really, the range of e to the x is the reason why the domain of natural log is only positive numbers. But that's kind of beyond what we're talking about right here. All right. So there's a bunch of these on your on your page, but I'm just going to do this one. X has kind of got all of the different things that can happen. It's the graph of some function on a very limited domain. Okay, we'll call this, you know, f of x. So we want to know what are the domain and range of f? Okay, so, well, we know the domain of f is a set of x values that are actually, you know, giving us back something. Well, it seems that this is a this is an open circle. Let's draw a nicer one than that. Yeah. So it's not including x equals negative three, but anything just before negative three would be okay. So if I was to just kind of, oh, whoops, I thought I was still in blue. Basically, you're just tracing the image along here. Right? What x values are we actually putting in? Well, this is negative 3, and that's 1. So that would be x is between negative 3 and positive 1, including positive 1, but not including negative 3 because of the circle, the open circle. If they ask for the range of f, the range is the actual y values achieved. And now, I probably didn't do the best job of drawing, but you can see on your note packet that that's, that is a point on the graph. The origin is included. So, you're thinking, which y values are we actually hitting? 
after getting all the way down here, it goes all the way up to here. So the range of f is y is between negative 4 and 0. And it includes negative 4 and 0. Okay. If you decided to write this in interval notation, this would be negative 3 up to 1, including 1, but not including negative 3. And if you wanted to write the range in interval notation, that's negative 4 up to 0, including both of them. There's five more examples on that page, but in the interest of time, I'm going to move on towards the piecewise functions. All right, yeah, here, let's talk about some piecewise defined functions. Okay, so piecewise defined functions are basically functions that follow one rule sometimes and a different rule other times. And we're just going to start by writing an equation for this graph. Now, writing an equation for a piecewise function is not really something that we're going to have to do too much of in this class. But this one's easy enough that I think we could do it. And I think it'll, you know, make it obvious what, these, what the parts of these things are doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, we'll just call this function f of x. Well, it really is following two different rules. What is, the, what is the red part of this thing look like? What function does this look like? Half a parabola, yes. Yeah, so it's, it looks like x squared. And if you look at it, you know, negative 1 squared is positive 1. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Okay, f of x equals x squared sometimes. And then other times, f of x is just constantly equal to 2. That, that blue line is just always at a height of 2. So what we'll do is we'll say that it follows both of these rules depending on what x is. And then we write pretty much the domain of each piece. Okay. Well, this red piece, the parabola, is only where x is less than 0, not where x is equal to 0 because of the open circle. Okay. But where x is 0 and larger... f of x is just always equal to 2. Okay. So that's how we're going to write these functions. So we're going to say the function is equal to, we're going to put one of those big curly braces up, and we're going to have however many pieces of graph will be however many rules we write down. And then, you know, kind of to the side, we make a note of the domain on which the function is following that. So they're, they're going to give us a function and ask us some questions about it. But first, we need to be able to graph this thing. All right. Well, absolute value of x minus 2. Man, it has been a long time since we've graphed an absolute value function. But what we did was we basically just looked at, you know, the vertex was where we were taking the absolute value of 0. So when we're taking the absolute value of 0, that'll be where x is equal to 2. And y will be the absolute value of 2 minus 2 is 0. So this is going to be here. And then it had a slope of 1 in each direction. So we would kind of you know, graph it like this, like that. But the thing is that this said this rule only applies when x is less than 1. So this part has got to be gone. And this point is gone too. And it seems like we're going to have to, yeah, lose some of this as well. Okay, when x is less than 1, we're going to need an open circle. So it'll probably look like that. And then negative x squared plus x. Man. Okay. Well, if we're going to graph a parabola, it's good that we start with a vertex, and that's negative b over 2a, so that's negative 1 over 2 times negative 1. Okay, so that's 1 half. That's not in the domain we're interested in. Okay. Well, let's just start at x equals 1, where it actually starts. Plug in 1. So that's negative 1 plus 1 is 0. We're going to have that. Plug in 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. 
And at 3, that would be negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. That will be off of my grid. and But not off of y'all's grid. And so you can plot that as well. But really, this is just part of a production. Right? So they're going to ask certain questions like, what's the domain of this function? Well, if you look over here, here and there, and you think of any number, well, there's not any sort of division or square roots or logarithms or anything that would cause a limited domain. It's, is there any numbers that are not included on our rules? And no, if you choose some random number like 10, well, 10 is greater than or equal to one, so I've got a rule for that and I can plug it in and get a value. Um, there's not really any numbers that I can't plug in. So the domain of this one is all real numbers, the set of real numbers. The range is the set of y values that I actually hit. Well, look at that. I'm, I'll just mark these in green. The line, or the part of the absolute value thing, is going from here, and it's going up. Okay, We can hit anything bigger than 1. And then over here, on the parabola, I'm hitting these y values. So it appears that y is greater than 1. We can get those values. We can also get y less than or equal to 0. The only y values we're not going to achieve are the y values between 0 and 1, specifically because of this gap right in there. Okay. Gap, anything larger than 0, but less than or equal to 1, the graph's not going to hit that. There's not going to be an, any of the image of the graph there. I mean, what else are they asking? They're asking some questions on this packet. F of negative 1. Okay, well, negative 1, you look and you see which rule does this thing follow? Well, F of negative 1, negative 1 is less than 1. So, when x is less than 1, F of x is the absolute value of x minus 2. Well, the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. F of 1. Okay. Well, 1 is greater than or equal to 1 because it's equal to 1. So I'm going to use the blue equation. So that'll be negative of 1 squared plus 1 is equal to 0. I meant to write that one up above in red. This is how it goes. And F of 4. Well, since 4 is bigger than or equal to 1, I'm going to use this rule again. Negative of 4 squared. So that's negative 16 plus 4 equals negative 12. Okay. So you choose which rule to plug into based on the value of x, based on these rules on the right. All right, we've got another one of these. And... No, basically, I think I'm going to let y'all, you know, let you try on your own how to graph this thing. And then I'm going to just show you the answer. So, you know, if you're working on this at home or maybe in my A-Day section because I'm out, you know, pause the video because the answers are just right about to come up. All right, there it is. Okay, so again, the domain is going to be all real numbers. Every number has been, in, uh, every x value has been included in those three intervals, negative infinity to zero, zero to two, and two to infinity. The range is the set of y values we're actually hitting. Well, I see that this maximum y value is y equals four. So I'm gonna say y is less than or equal to four. If they ask you for, let's see, about f of 4. Well, since 4 is greater than 2, or it's in the interval 0 to infinity, I'm going to say, well, that's negative 2 times 4 plus 8, which is equal to 0. They asked me for f of 1. Well, 1 is between 0 and 2. You look at the x value. Okay, so it's 1 squared. 
if they asked you about, you know, say, f of negative 6, whoops, gave it away, it's in blue, that's all right. Well, it's just x, it's just negative 6. All right, and the last example I've got for you is some sort of, like, context problem. Your cell phone service provider gives you 2 gigabytes of data per month, and it costs you $75 a month. Each additional gigabyte costs $15. Okay, so we need to write an equation for the cost based on the number of gigabytes used. Okay, so I'm going to define the variables. That's going to be C being the cost in dollars, and X will be the amount of data used in gigabytes. Well, this is a piecewise defined function. If you use less than or equal to 2 gigabytes, then it costs $75. But if you use more than 2, then it's going to be 75 plus $15 for each additional one. Now, the tricky thing about this is you're not multiplying 15 by the number you actually used. You're multiplying 15 by the number that's the amount it's bigger than 2 by. So you have to do an x minus 2 there. Okay, so if they asked you, you know, what is the, what is the cost of 1.7 gigabytes? Well, 1.7 is less than or equal to 2, so it's just $75. But if they asked you for the cost of, I don't know, 3 gigabytes, well, I've gone over. 3 is bigger than 2, so I'd say that's 75 plus 15 times that extra 1 gigabyte I used. So 75 plus 15 is $90. I'll have more practice problems for you all on this type of thing next time. Uh, more context problems, more piecewise defined functions, more domain and range questions. But for now, I think this is a, a good start on this.